break the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. The end is written. Oh, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ. The morning that sealed the promise, your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me oh jesus yours is the
Hello, church family. We hope that you are doing well, and it's great to see you this evening. We're actually pre-recording this the day before you'll see it, so we're recording on Tuesday night. You'll see it tomorrow on Wednesday. We, we do just want to apologize that we've obviously had some issues with our live streams uh, the, the last few times, and we are working on that. Uh, you can pray for us. Uh, apparently, other churches have been having issues. It's, it's a, re- a, a live stream is more complicated than you realize. There are a lot of factors that go in, so sometimes it's difficult to narrow down exactly what the issue is. But we are working on it, and, um, and, and we're just excited to, to be with you uh, for, for so many reasons, that, that we can have this evening together, and, and then Father's Day is coming up this coming Sunday, and then a, a week and a half from now, we'll be able to gather together as a church family. So we are very excited and uh, looking forward to everything that God has for us as we move forward uh, as a church family. And so this evening is, uh, is the opportunity for me to share some more hilarious jokes. And so, you know, that's what I'm here for. That's, that's, that's what I'm excited to do. So um, let me just share. These are, these are short and sweet, but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy them. The first one is this. What kind, of exercise do, what kind of exercise do lazy people do? What kind of exercise do lazy people do? Diddly squats. Okay, diddly squats. The second one. How do you make a tissue dance? How do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. And then the third and best joke. What did the pirate say when he turned 80? What did the pirate say when he turned 80? I'm matey. That's a great joke. I'm matey. We have Katie with us, the Bosworth family. They're, they're vacationing somewhere great, and uh, we're just so blessed to have Katie home, home from Mount Vernon Nazarene. She's uh, been a part of a worship team at the university and, and, and been a part of leading um, this entire school year, and so we're just blessed to have her here able to, to lead us in worship. And So let me have a prayer for us this morning. Lord, it's so great for us to be able to seek you And and Lord, to just walk with you, Lord, even though uh, 2020 has had so many challenges and so many difficulties, we just affirm today, Lord, that our hope is in you, our trust is in you, we love you, we need you, and Lord, we want to draw close to you and worship you right now, this day, this evening, we want to worship you, and so I pray, Lord, that you you would help us to worship you in a way that is worthy of you. And Lord, I also pray that you would receive our praises and uh, that our worship would be meaningful and even fulfilling to you this evening. We love you. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sorrow and dead in my sin, lost without hope and no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty. heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes Cancel my 
dead and he called me his friend when death was arrested and my life began oh oh your grace so free washes over me you have made your endless love pouring down on us you have made us new now life begins with you our savior displayed on a criminal's cross Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. Oh, that's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace is so washes over me you have made me new now life begins with you it's your endless love pouring down on us you have made us new now life song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever. Amen. When death was arrested and my life began. Oh, we're free, free forever. We're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever. Amen. When death was and my life began when death was arrested and my life began when death was arrested and my life began The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never Every war he wages, he will 
I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Oh, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for and you turn it for good you turn it for He's coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break, his broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Oh God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He is roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Oh, 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 oh. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our 
battles, every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh. can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He is roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. And every knee will bow before Him. Oh, Be able to worship with you to the, this evening, and I just want to share a few announcements. We just uh, also want to mention the tithes and offerings again. We haven't been able to gather for a few months, and so you're not here to physically be able to participate in the offering. So we just want to remind: so many of you have done an awesome job using the website to give or, or uh, sending in uh, your 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 gift uh, by mail. And uh, again, we are so grateful. And just would ask you to continue to remember us, and, and we appreciate that so much. God bless you, but you can use the website or, or mail it directly to the address there. And then the big announcement, of course, is that in a week and a half, we are going to reopen as a church family, and we're very excited for that. Now, we just want to say, if you are not quite ready, you're anxious, maybe you are in the at-risk category, there is no pressure. We don't want you to feel any pressure from us. We support you watching the live stream, and we want to stay connected with you. We want to minister to you. We love you. Uh, but if you need to stay home, we understand. Uh, but I would also say to those of you who are ready to come back and you're comfortable with that, I am so excited to see you and to actually see faces and, and be able to greet you as you come and say goodbye as you leave. And, and uh, that's going to be a great day. So we look forward to that day. Again, two services, 9 a.m., and 10.45 a.m. If you want to come but you're anxious and you want to be extra safe, we would probably recommend the 9 a.m. service because we assume that the attendance will definitely be lower in that service is our assumption. And so we would recommend that one for you. And we also just want to mention children's ministry that for the preschoolers, we don't think we can do that safely yet. So just bring your, your kids and your toddlers in here with you. And uh, we will have a couple overflow areas that if, you, if they need a little time or a little break or you need to work with them on something, um, you can take them to the former sanctuary or to the nursery. In the 9 a.m. service, we'll have a video playing. Um, and in the 1045 service, we'll stream the actual service so you could be in there with them and, and still be able to participate and watch the service. 
Our elementary, elementary age kids in both services will be with us for about half the time, and then Pastor Ken and some volunteers will take them to the shelter house for a socially distanced interactive lesson. So that's the plan, and, and we're so excited and looking forward to, to having you gather and, and be here together. And then the last announcement I want to make is that uh, we are going to continue the Wednesday live streams, and we're going to shift a little bit. Uh, Pastor Drew is obviously going to be doing teen ministry again, and so he's starting that uh, even tonight is, is kind of the beginning. So we have teens that will be out in the shelter house uh, on, on Wednesday evenings. And so I'm going to begin teaching. Um, and uh, actually, I'll, I'll kind of start things off here in two weeks. And I'm going to be teaching from the Bible reading plan. We're sending out a church mailing, I believe, next week. And you'll get your, uh, your next bookmark for the Bible reading plan. But the month of June is the book of Genesis. And then we, we're moving in, the, in the, this summer through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, through the first five books of the Bible. And, and uh, this summer, I'll be teaching from those in, in uh, various ways. So we'd love to have you come and be a part of the live stream. It'll be a little different, but I'm still going to tell hilarious jokes. And uh, I still plan that we're still going to have a couple worship songs, and then I'll be teaching. So we really want you to participate and be a part of that. And then the last thing that I'll mention is uh, tonight, uh, well, two weeks, from, a week from tonight, I should say, uh, Pastor Ken will be teaching, and that's the service that we recorded last week that we were not able to upload it for whatever reason. It'll be available on June the 24th, one week from tonight, and uh, he did a great job, and so I'm excited for you to hear his message um, about insecurity. I thought it was really good. And, and tonight we have, a, for the first time, Greg Mason is going to come and, and speak to us, and Greg and his wife Starla are new to the church. Well, they've been here a little over a year. Uh, but they've been a blessing. A lot of you have had a chance to get to know them. They're really sweet people. What you may not know is that Greg has preached at different churches over the years and um, has quite a bit of experience preaching, and he's got such a, a, a great heart. Um, he was teaching with me before the virus hit, and uh, he taught a lesson on the 23rd Psalm that I learned so much from what he was sharing. And so I'm excited for you to hear him tonight. This, is, this might be your first time actually teaching to a camera so this will be a new experience for you, brother, but we're excited to have you and Starla in the church and ex excited to have you share with us this evening. So please come. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Kevin. It's good to be here. I tell you, you know, it's just, just about good to be anywhere at this point. We've been cooped up so long, and now we can finally be out some. And, and uh, you know, the, it hasn't been very good to my stomach. You know, this extra couple months at home is really on the pounds, but hopefully you can see all of me. But I'm going to be in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And verse 28 says, and we know that all things, excuse me, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. And we, we can know that everything that happens in our lives, you know, it, everything's not good that happens. But everything that happens, God is working it for good. God can use everything for his glory and for our good. And, you know, it's wonderful to know that when we do go through trials, he has a plan. And he's, he's got it under control, and we can trust him. It says, for, verse 29 says, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And so he foreknew, that means in the beginning, before God created time, God exists outside of time, and so he created time for us, but, but, but God exists outside of time, and so in the beginning, he already knew the end. And there's probably been, I don't know, 15 or 16 billion people in the history of time, and God knew for each of those whether they would choose him or not. And the ones that he knew would choose him, he said, those he predestined to become uh, in the image of his son, he wants us to be like his son. And that we could be, Jesus would be the firstborn, and we would be brothers and sisters. And verse 30, and those who he predestined, he also called, and whom he called, he justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. So when he called us and we were saved, we were justified. To be justified means that you've been declared righteous. Not because you're righteous, but because Jesus is righteous. And we received his righteousness when we were saved. And so God declared us righteous. But it also says that he glorified us. And we're not glorified yet. We're still in our earthly bodies. We're going to have a glorified body. We're going to be glorified one day. But he uses past tense. He says glorified 
because God exists outside of time, and in his mind, it's already done because God already knows the end. So to God, he's already justified us and glorified us. What shall we say then in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? You know, it's, it's, it's so good to know that when God's working everything for our good, it's not that bad things won't happen, but he's working it out, and God's already in our future. He knows what's going to happen, and if he's for us, who can be against us? Now, this doesn't mean you won't have any enemies. It doesn't mean that people won't try to, to, to thwart you or discourage you from following Christ or, or cause you problems, but they can't be successful because everything that anyone tries to use for evil, God's going to turn it around for good, just like the sister sang. At verse um, 32 says, He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will, not, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? So if God was not willing to spare his son, if he gave us his own son, what won't he give us? He has everything that we need for this life and everything we need for eternity, and he's going to make sure we have it. God is going to take care of us through every trial, for, through all the good times and everything in life. God has it under control, and there's nothing that he won't give us, that will help us in our walk. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God that justifies. So he said, who can bring a charge against us? Who, who can bring a charge to God against us? Well, the only one who really can do that is, of course, Satan's the accuser of the brothers. And he's always trying to, to um, you know, accuse us and trying to, to, you know, accuse us before God. But the only one who can really bring a charge against us is God. And God's the one that justified us. So the only one who can condemn us is justified us. So he's declared we're righteous. And um, verse 34 says, Who is the one that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who he was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. So the only one that can charge us is God, and he justified us. The only one who can condemn us is Christ, and he's interceding on our behalf. He is at the right hand of God, interceding for us, going to God with our needs and our petitions. So who could be against us? How can we lose? If we trust God, if we're serving him, there's, there's none to condemn us. There's none to charge us. Pretty much, if you're going to serve the Lord, you've got it made. Because he's the good shepherd, and his goal is to take us all home. You know, when a shepherd takes his sheep out, like we were talking about in the Psalms, when a shepherd takes his sheep out, he takes them you know, through all these different fields and all these different places, but his ultimate goal is to get those sheep home. And God is our shepherd, and his goal is to get us home. And he's going to do what it takes. And so his, God's goal isn't to condemn us. It's to justify us and to glorify us. Um, verse 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship? So what, who can separate us from that love that Christ has for us and the love that we have for him? Can trouble or hardship separate us? You know, last couple months we've been through just a little bit of hardship, and we've had some, some you know, hard times that we've had to go through, and, you know, the whole thing about the toilet paper, you know, and it was it's really kind of funny unless you didn't have it. Then it's a real serious problem. But, you know, in all of the hardships of the last few months, people lost their jobs. There were, you know, um, people that were sick and people that died. There were so many things that happened. And, but through all of that, Christ still loved us. Christ was still working all things for our good. We still loved him. That couldn't separate us from the love of Christ. Um, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. So, you know, the persecution, the church is in, in the world is being persecuted today. And there's, there's so many, you know, terrible things happening to Christians around the world. We don't really see that so much here because we live in a nation that has relative, you know, religious freedom. But throughout the world, there's, people are suffering persecution for the cause of Christ. But in that, he's there with them. He is not separated from them. That, that, that love, it, they have not been separated from his love, and they still love him, and they're suffering that for his cause, and he sees that, and he loves them. And the famine and nakedness, you know, wouldn't, 
Sometimes we may go through times when we don't have everything that we want or need. We may, might go through some hard times, but there will never be a famine of the love of God, and there will never be you know, a time when He doesn't care for us and see us and isn't able to meet our needs, or danger or sword. You know, there's, you know, even in a time of war or, or the, you know, we've seen the riots and different things and the dangers and stuff, those don't separate us from the love of God. He still loves us. We still love Him. As it is written, for, thy, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. That was verse 36. That quote was from the 44th Psalm. And the 44th Psalm, the, while the Psalms was for the Roman Jews that this was written to, the, the Psalms was their songbook. And they had probably sang that 44th Psalm, and they knew what the reference was. And the, the 44th Psalm talks about how that, you know, we're serving God, and we're, you know, trying our best to serve you, Lord, but bad things are still happening. We're still having battles. He said, we're still facing the danger of death, and, you know. And, you know, why do we have to go through these things when we're trusting you? And yet, those things can't, even death can't separate us from the love of God. Actually, death unites us with the love of God. When, when we reach death, we'll be with God. We'll be with Christ forever. And that's the thing. Death isn't the end. It's just the beginning. And knowing that, that even death can't separate us from the love of God, you know, there's, there's nothing that can, you know, if we will trust Him and hold on to Him, there's nothing that can separate us. No, in all these things, verse 37, no, in all these things we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. So he's not saying that there won't be hardships or trials or, you know, all the other things. But he's saying in these things we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. It's not because we're great or because we've done things to win the victory, but it's through the one that loved us. Because he loves us, he's working all things for our good. He's making sure that everything comes out the way he planned. And, and no matter what Satan throws at us, no matter how, you know, things go in our lives, we know that he's working it for good, and we can trust him because we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, so even in death or in life, it can separate us from the love of God. Neither angels nor demons nor things nor the present, nor the future, nor any powers. There's nothing, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord, there's nothing that can separate us from that. If we will trust Him and serve Him, He will take us all the way home. And it's, it's not that, he, that there won't be trials, but God doesn't take us to things. He takes us through things. And when we come to, you know, sickness or different events in our lives that we have to go through that we didn't ask for, that we don't deserve, that, you know, nobody should have to go through. And yet, here we are, and we have to go through these things. We don't go through them alone. God will take us all the way through. He doesn't just take us to a trial and dump us off and say, you're on your own. He takes us through the trials. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And we will always have His love. And so, you know, we can have confidence we talked about the things in the past or the present or the future. You know, the future is a big, a big question mark. Nobody knows what's going to happen. And, you know, I think some people just, they feed on the fear. They try to, to make people afraid of the future. But, you know, the Bible says a perfect love casts out fear. Because if you have the love of God, there's really nothing to be afraid of because we know that He's already in the future. He's already working everything for our good. He already knows what's going to happen. He's got a plan. He's got it under control. And so, you know, people, we don't have to be afraid. We don't know what the future holds. And, you know, the people try to make us afraid of, like, well, the virus is going to come back or, the, you know, this is going to happen or that's going to happen. You know what? Only God knows what the future holds. And as long as we hold on to Him, He will take us through the future. He'll take us all the way home if we'll just keep trusting Him. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for the service tonight, Lord, for letting us be here, and we thank you for your word. We thank you 
that you know what's in the future and you have everything under control and that we can trust you. And we ask you now, Lord, to bless us down through the rest of this week, Lord. Use our lives for your glory. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy the rest of the week.